Hello YouTubers, today I'll be covering a Dell PSU upgrade. So this is for a XPS 8700 and the reason for this is because I just got a new to me HD6970 card that requires both a 6 pin and a 8 pin which my current CPU setup doesn't have. Unfortunately I only have just a 2 6 pin and despite them including an adapter, unfortunately it's a uh, Molex adapter which I no longer have. So I picked up this 750G uh, power adapter from EVGA from Newegg and going to get that installed in here. Now I guess one thing of concern is the fact that some others have pointed out before that there may be not be enough room because this particular power supply is kind of long but we'll see how that goes. And if you're asking why did I get a 6970? Dude don't you know it's 2015 man that graphic card is like two to three years old? Yep totally get it man but that's not the point. The point is that after much extensive research I found that this particular card Aside from the GTX 570, 580, perhaps even a 590 or the HD 6990, this is going to be one of the absolute best card for video encoding in Sony Vegas Pro 12 with specific use with the main concept encoder. Don't believe me? I'll give you some benchmarks after this. So popping open the box of the 750G now, this is the first generation, not the second version. There's uh, tons of cables on the left side with a you know three prong power cord, the main uh, PSU itself, instructions, and more cables on the right side. I did opt for a fully modular version this time. For those not familiar with the term, it simply means that all of the cables are detachable from the power supply unit itself, and this is to save on space and clutter within your desktop because on the XPS 8700 it is a mid tower case, so I wanted to save on the clutter of extra cables to improve the airflow within it. In the future I will opt for a custom built PC but for now this is what it is. So currently I'm just doing a, a quick visual pre-check before I actually install it. So this power supply is a bit longer than the standard stock Dell. It's a 750 watt Go version and for those not familiar with that term it's typically labeled I think 80 certified, 80 plus, and then there's a bronze, gold, platinum. What those simply mean is the efficiency of the power supply under load. So with the more precious the metal like platinum and gold being more efficient than say your bronze. I'm not going to go into details with that but I'll, I'll post a link in my information. But I did read the fact that you know some people have upgraded and ran into the space issue because as you can see up there at the very top of the chassis there is the USB and headphone jack input cable there so that's that black wire hiding behind these wires here so is that that black wire right there so I don't know I think I probably just have enough clearance but we'll see how it goes for those who have never changed a power supply unit before first thing you want to do is remove all of the cabling that comes out from the power supply to your main boards. Um, if you can, probably take a picture or make a mental note to help yourself later to figure out what goes where. But the manual does come with instructions on, you know, certain uh, that gives you guidance on the type of connector as well as to what device they go to or the position on the board. But still, wouldn't hurt to take a picture or make a mental drawing and note of you know where particular pins and things went. Now I had already removed my original A9 270 card, uh, sorry my R9 270 card Radeon. So that's out of the way here, that's why you see this big massive uh, empty slot here. One thing that kind of perplexed me was that Dell elected to install the Sound Blaster card in the mini PCI slot here, um, even though it did fit down here because this was right up against the card and didn't allow good airflow. So I actually moved it down to the bottom slot there, so thereby giving it one card space for the airflow. But anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling all of these cables that connects to the optical drive, my two hard drives, also I believe I have an MSATA down there somewhere, to the main boards as well as you know various other uh, components in here. Okay so I got all the cabling removed just to recap very quickly it was one um, 12, 12 volt pin here, four pins here, the main 24 pin down there as well as uh, two power attachments for the hard drives. I forgot I actually didn't have a SSD in this one because it's actually on my MSATA drive, a tiny one here. So this has worked out great. I mean I could boot into Windows 8.1 literally in seconds. So these are pretty much all the connectors. Again the 24 pin, the one that was attached to the R9 270 uh, Radeon card, the 4 pin 12 volt, as well as the uh, various power pins for the hard drives itself. 
Next step you want to do is go ahead and remove the power supply unit itself. It's simply removed by four screws on the back of the chassis. As can be seen here, that's these four. One, two, three, four. Once you get the four screws removed, one thing of note is that there's these two little tabs down here. So you gotta depress each one and then you're gonna slide the entire power supply unit out of the way. And there you have it, the original new unit is now out and I'm gonna get ready to install the new one. All right, although it took a little finagling around, I made sure to remove the RAM as well as to unplug this fan. So uh, as I was wiggling this guy in, it wouldn't damage anything here. So, and it did take a little creative uh, routing of the USB cable here, or I should say the combination of wires for the USB slash audio ports there. And I don't know if you can make that out, but there is actually just a little bit of um, a crack there that allows the wire to come through. So basically, normally, you know, it used to hung, hang out from the middle and come out when there was some free space, but now instead I routed it down and around. And yeah, you can see I took a cut there, but anyway. So I did route it down and around so that it does fit without any crimping of the wires itself. So time for the wire install. The first one I'm going to hit up is this 24 pin that goes onto the main 24 pin there. And then onto the motherboard there. On second thought, given its location, because you don't want to obstruct the other wires from going in. So you may want to just plug into the motherboard, which it is right now, right there and then just leave it uh, hanging out until you're ready for it. That'll probably be like the final step before it goes in, since otherwise it can obstruct the installation of the other wires onto the PSU itself. Actually, before we continue any further, so next thing you wanna do is just identify the rest of the cables that you need and set them aside because, again, the power supply unit is supplied with additional whole mess of cables, so you obviously, hopefully, won't be needing all of them, especially on a small uh, micro ATX um, tire size like a, a XPS 8700 but anyway I've set aside two SATA cables because even though I have two drives the optical drive is spaced a little further apart so I'm not sure that that little connected split here is going to be far enough between the distance of my hard drive and the optical drive over there which I'll get to later so anyway I set two of those aside you're going to want to find the one labeled CPU1 because this plugs into the four port that I highlighted earlier on the one end the side that is labeled CPU, this goes into the back of the power supply unit and the other side, which has a split two fours here, one of these will go into the motherboard itself down there, which my fingertip is uh, kind of highlighting there. And last but not least, you'll want two of these VGA cables. Well, it really depends on your setup. The HD6970 does require one six pin and one eight pin. So again, depending on your GPU, you'll want to set aside either one or two of these cables. So this side, the label side, goes into the back of the power supply unit. On the other side was basically a split of a six slash eight combo. So if you put it together, you get eight. The reason for this was the different wattage supplied via either the six pin or eight pin. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the eight pin supplies 150 watts and the six pin supplies 75 watts for a, two, a total of 225 watts. But anyway, so again, this is what I will be needing, so I've set aside two of these. Given space is at a premium now with this oversized PSU, at least in the case of the XPS 8700 chassis, I'm going to start at the back of the PSU and then route it back according to the motherboard and the devices. I know this is a little hard to see, but I'm going to start with the one labeled CPU2, and that's this one right here because that's the furthest one away and the one that's tightest and hardest to get to. So I'm going to plug that one in first and then probably hit up the VGAs down here. And then last but not least, where I have most access to, the SATA ports here. So now that I've got CPU1 cable in, there's a CPU2 right beneath it that I don't need to use. However, there are a total of four VGA power ports here and that way you can run four-way SLI. But the thing that I need to be careful is because the optical drive is right here and the power is right here. So I don't wanna route two wires here and then obstruct this one. So I'm actually probably gonna use these two up here and then plug in the SATA port here for the uh, power. Okay, so now I've got the power port for the optical drive in and I elected to use the last one in the chain so that way I could route it the rest uh, into this hole here which normally houses the second optical drive. Given I don't have that so I figure that if I attach the end, the rest can route over here and just create more space for airflow. 
Given that I might reuse this on a future build, I elected to use the two topmost VJ ports to make it easier to remove later on. Because you gotta remember, when you gotta remove it, you gotta get your hands in there. And like I said, again, this is a just very tight space. So, and last but not least, the two power cables for the SATA devices. So I elected to use the topmost and the one on the right. All right, I've got all the uh, cables done on the power supply unit side. So again, that's two SATAs, two VGAs, the main 24 pin, and one of the CPU pins for the four prong. Now, speaking of that CPU pin, you'll notice that it splits into two four pins. I only need a single one of these, but there's only one that fits. So if you'll notice, the one on the left has two square pins, and that's the one that I'm gonna use for my uh, XPS 8700. So that'll be this guy right here. Incidentally, the XPS 8300 and likely the 8000 series share the same chassis, so you could possibly install that EVGA here as well. But anyway, my main point was about the 8700. I just wanted to point this out, though. Okay, last but not least, I've got the 6970 installed back in. This is a particularly long card, so you just got to watch all of the SATA cables as well as the other cables there. But as you can see here, this is where it required the 6-pin and the 8-pin. Still got the wrapper on because obviously I want to make sure that this thing works before I rip it off and in case I need to send it back. And that's it. That completes all of the cabling within the XPS 8700. All right, here you can see it's uh, completely installed and it sits nice and flush within the original spot. If you want to see more of these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again for watching. As part of FTC disclosures, none of the products used in this video were sponsored. Everything was purchased for my personal use.